I think we have a natural tendency to want to display the best of ourselves and to exhibit the traits that we find uh, the most impressive and even if we're not consciously doing it, we, we do tend to diminish our shortcomings or come up with uh, reasoning or excuses for the things we're not quite as good at. And something that I'm going to be keeping in mind this entire training block leading into my next meet is that I have to embrace some of the things that I'm not as great at and work on some of those weaknesses. Um, people ask me, why don't you do this or that? And my conditioned response is usually, well, that doesn't work for me. And the fact of the matter is that in the past, it hasn't worked for me. And that might have been related to other issues that were going on. Um, the reasons that I never have really pursued high bar squatting is because I feel like it, or I have felt like it didn't have a very solid carryover to what I was trying to do. And it was, um, not as effective as getting my regular squatting in, but running this program I'm going to be getting plenty of regular squatting in, so it does open up the possibility to throw some of that other stuff in there, and on the Cube Kingpin template, that's your secondary movement, and something that I've realized doing this is I'm really bad at certain things. I'm really pretty terrible at these high rep work um, squats, and I'm going to you know, they don't look hard, and the weight itself isn't hard in any of these, but my conditioning was just garbage, and it doesn't allow me to to do multiple sets of a whole bunch of reps. And there's certain times, if I'm running a small of program where you go in expecting it to be awful, uh, you kind of put your head through down and grind through it. Or if you're going for a max rep on something, it's... You know, pretty easy to get yourself psyched up for one set, but to come back and hit set after set and keep your ego in check enough to keep a couple reps in the tank so that you can come back and do another set, that's really rough. And it's going to be a true test of my, I guess, mental fortitude and commitment to getting better to be able to do this. This first round of squats was just not very enjoyable. Um, I was focusing on trying to make sure my depth was solid. The first two sets I think I was pretty consistent. This third set I got a little lazy and tried to rush the tempo a little too much and you see that I don't quite hit depth on a couple of them or at least the, the bottomed out depth that I've been pursuing for these last couple of sessions. But that's, you know, when you're getting up towards the 27 rep mark of the squats it doesn't really matter what the weight is, you're just kind of tax a little bit, so that's something I'm going to try to continue to improve. Um, again, any kind of breakdowns you guys are seeing are mostly due to me just being tired and lazy, not so much the weight, uh, you know, the weight being too much for me or anything, and uh, the next time I come to a rep day on this, I'd like to be able to <laughs> to do a little bit more. Um, I was stopping at an, eight, at an 8 RPE, which for me means anywhere from 2 to 4 reps in the tank. And so I wanted to make sure I was keeping it pretty consistent with at least two rep reps left in the tank. Because I do have a tendency to be able to grind through some uncomfortable sets. After that, I moved on to the bench press. And then I uh, had five doubles. This is technically the heavy benching portion. Um, so I had 315 and I did it for all five doubles with my competition grip, my feet are still flat. I'm trying really hard not to let the weight uh, rebound out. So even if it sinks in, I tried really hard to um, make sure that I didn't have any kind of heaving type motion. And I think that I accomplished it pretty well in these sets. Uh, this is probably the most controlled I've had 315 in a long time. And I was trying my best to keep the movement at around a seven RPE, which is basically speed work uh, for, for me and the way that the weights are moving. And I think that was pretty accurate, so. I was feeling good about the bench pressing, let's say that. Um, after the benching, uh, the five doubles, I had my close grip work, and I know that Brandon's program calls for 85%, uh, and since I'm running it through my RPE standard and figuring that out, um, I determined based on this day that my 85% of a close grip would not be uh, more than my 80% of a competition grip, go figure, right? And so I brought the, I kept the weight the same and tried to be, again, really solid on the pauses and keep my butt down and keep my feet down 
and uh, I felt like that last one was a little less comfortable than it should have been, so I dropped another 10 pounds and did my last set at 305. These were supposed to be one to three reps, and as I get closer to the meet, I will probably aim more for the one, the single or the double, but I really wanted to make sure that I was getting all three reps possible for those two sets. After that, I went back over to hit my high bar squats, and this is one of those things that I really notice in in my training uh, in the past where I've done them a little bit and they were just uncomfortable and I didn't like them and they were hard and so I just found other things to do but they really do expose some some weaknesses in my in my lifting and that's something that I can work on and I've dedicated myself to embracing the crappy parts of this and doing some lifting that I'm not quite as good at and making sure that I exhibit it for you guys so that you see there is some struggle that happens. It's not all just doing the things you want to do all the time. You have to make uh, certain decisions and sacrifices to your comfort level. I'm not going to go on a pedestal and say lifting's all sacrifice but because it's kind of one of those endeavors that you do it because you want to do it. It should never be something that you feel like you have to do. Um, but that's a topic for a different video. But anyway, I tried it. I, this second set here, uh, 435 for 6, this is the most weight I've ever done on high bar for more than a single. Um, it's also the first time I've ever done a high bar squat wearing a belt. And it's funny to me because this set was actually easier than the first set with the 405, just from the belt and uh, that added confidence, I guess. But when I do have a breakdown in my high bar squat, it is directly in my ability to stay upright. And the belt did help me stay a little bit more upright. So the, every single one of the reps was significantly easier. And you're going to see the sixth one, I really tried to bomb it down. And it really pushed my knees forward. And there's a motor pattern there that I have to develop that I am not very skilled at yet. So that's all incoming. Um, I do want to send a shout out. Once again, I've been thanking him a lot recently. But uh, Garrett Blevins and I had... A Google Hangout video chat the other day for about two hours and we talked about programming and life and lifting and a lot of a lot of fun stuff and he's just a really cool guy I respect the crap out of him so again I'll link his channel down in the description um, I've been a lot of the ideas that I'm using for this program came directly from uh, having talked to him and seen the progress that he's been making recently and um, I had an opportunity to try some new things in my programming and so I'm going to utilize that so thank you again, Garrett. I appreciate everything uh, that you've helped me with and all the talks we've had. Also, I'm going to do another 24-hour question and answer thing. I'm actually going to set that up tonight. I'm going to link the Facebook page where you guys can leave your questions. Please leave them as comments in that thread. And for the next 24 hours, give or take, um, so probably tomorrow night around 11 or midnight, I'll go ahead and cut those off and try to start making videos in the next week or so to answer all of the questions I get in those 24 hours. So if you guys have anything you're burning to know the answer to and uh, comment sections aren't good enough for you, then go ahead and do that. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the shirt I was wearing, the Ben Rice tees will be down in the description also. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.